It isn't right, madam. You're just destroying yourself. Luca and the maid have got the, the maid and the cook have gone off fruit picking. Every living being is in rejoicing. Only you sit here in this room all day as though it was a convent and take no pleasure. And if I'm right, it's a whole year and you haven't left this house. I shall never go out. Why should I? My life is already at an end. He is in his grave and I have buried myself within these four walls. <coughs> we are both dead. Yes, yes, madam. 
will see me cry. How I can love and forgive. My love will die out with me only when this poor heart will cease to beat. And aren't you ashamed? I am a good and virtuous little wife. I have locked myself in and will be true to the grave and you? Aren't you ashamed, you bad child? You deceived me and rose with me. Left me alone and... Madam, somebody is asking for you. He wants to see you. Didn't you tell him since the death of my husband I do not receive? I told him, but he wouldn't listen. Said it is a very pressing affair. I do not receive. I, I told him, but the devil, he curses and pushes himself in. He's in the dining room now. Very well, then. Ask him in. What manners. How these people annoy me. What does he want with me? Why should he disturb my peace? I see now I shall, I shall have to go into a convent. Yes. You fool, you talk too much. Ass. Madame, may I have the honor to present myself? I am Grigory Stepanovich Snerva, landowner and retired lieutenant of artillery. I am compelled to disturb you in a very pressing affair. What do you want? Your late husband, with whom I have the honor of being acquainted, died in my debt for 1,200 rubles on two bills of exchange. As I have to pay the interest on my mortgage tomorrow, I've come to ask you, madame, to pay me the money today. 1,200, and what was my husband in debt to you for? He used to buy oats from me. Luca, make sure that <coughs> Toby gets the extra feed of oats. Yes, madam. If Nikolai Mihailovich died in debt to you, then I shall certainly pay you. But you must excuse me today, as I haven't any spare cash. The day after tomorrow, my steward will return from town, and I'll give him instructions to settle your account. But at the moment, I cannot do as you wish. Moreover, it is exactly seven months today since the death of my husband, and I am in a state of mind which prevents me from giving money matters my attention. Now, madame, I am in a state of mind which, if I don't pay the interest on my mortgage tomorrow, shall force me to exit this world gracefully feet first. They'll take my estate. You'll have your money the day after tomorrow. I don't want it the day after tomorrow. I want it today. You must excuse me. I can't pay you. And I cannot wait until the day after tomorrow. And what can I do if I don't have the money now? You mean you won't pay me? I can't. Is that your last point? Yes, the last word. Absolutely your last <coughs> Absolutely. Thank you very much. I'll make a note. The dead people want me to stay there. I meet the man on the road and he asks me, Why are you always so angry, Gagori Stefanovich? How on earth am I not to get angry? I am in desperate need of my money. Yesterday morning I tackle my house and I ride out daily and I call up all my debtors. And not a single one of them paid me. At the end of it all, I am dead beaten, spent in thy goodness knows where in some tavern known by a Jew. At last I travel here, seventy verse from home, and get here looking for something. And I am received by you in a state of mind. How shouldn't I get angry? Sir. I distinctly told you my steward will pay you when he returns from town. I didn't come to you, steward, madame, but to you. Devil take it and pardon me for saying so. Would I want with your steward? Excuse me, sir. I am unaccustomed to such expressions or such tone of voice. I will hear no more. A state of mind. Her husband is dead, seven. Have I to pay the interest on my mortgage or not? I ask you, have I to pay or have I not? Suppose your husband is dead and you were in a state of mind of some such nonsense. And your steward's gone away, devil take him God knows where. 
What do you want me to do? Do you want that I should fly away in a balloon from my predators? I run my head in against the what? I call the Khrushchev, he is not at all. Yaroslavich, he goes into hiding when he ever comes. I have a terrible round of question, and then he throw him out of it. Mazuma has something wrong with his balls. <laughs> and this woman, this, she has a state of mind. Not one of the swine wants to pay me. And it is all because I am too gentle. I am just a little rag, weak wax in their hands. I am too gentle. But just you with it. They shall see what I really like. They're not going to get around me like that. I'm going to stay until I get my money. Oh, I am angry. I am so angry. My, my whole insides are quick. I, I can't even breathe. I, I even feel sick. Meg, Meg. <coughs> What is it? Get me some water. What a way to reason. A man is in desperate need of his money. But she cannot pay because she is not disposed to deal with these matters. That is really silly feminine logic. <laughs> it is why I never like and I don't like now to have to talk to woman. <laughs> I would much prefer to sit in a barrel of gunpowder than talk to me. <laughs> oh, it's chilly. It's chilly. And it's all on account of that little piece of fluff. <laughs> I cannot look at one of those poetic creatures, even from a distance. Without breaking out into a cold sweat of anger. Oh, I can't even look. <laughs> Madam is ill, and we'll see no one. Get out. <laughs> ill, and we'll see no one. No, it's all right she don't see me. I am going to stay until I get my money. She can be in for a week if she likes. She can be in for the year. I'll stay here for the year. Confound that I am going to get my money. She's not going to get around me with her, with her widow's weeds and her dimple cheeks. I know those dimples. Simeone, take them out. We're going nowhere. I'd stay here and tell the men in the stables to give those horses morals. Oh, it is bad. The heat's frightful. No one pays me. I slip back in and here is a piece of fluff in mourning with a state of mind. <laughs> oh, my head hurts. Oh, that mark about my head hurts. <coughs> I think I'll have a fight. Yes, I shall have a fight. Meg, Meg! <laughs> what is it? Get me some vodka. <coughs> Oh. <laughs> I, I must say, I look well. Nick is on cat. There's a dust and crop. And he done in boots. Maybe the lady took me for a brigand. Hm. I am sure it is rather impolite to enter into the drawing room dressed in this state, but. I am not here as a visitor. I am here as a creditor. And I am sure there is no prescribed dress code for creditors. <laughs> you allow your 
yourself to go too far, sir. What did you say? No, 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 nothing, really. So sorry. Shut up and get out. <laughs> Devil's come to stay. What bad luck brought him? Oh, I am angry. I am so angry. I could ground the whole place into dust. Oh, I even feel sick. Mate! <laughs> Sir, in my solitude I become an accustomed to the masculine voice, and I can't stand shouting. I must ask you not to disturb my peace. Pay me my money and I go. I told you perfectly plainly, I don't have any money to spare. Wait until the day after tomorrow. And I tell you perfectly plainly, if you don't pay me the money today, I hang myself from a rope tomorrow. I don't have the money. Oh, so strange. You mean you won't pay me? I can't. Well, then. You're going to pay me the day after tomorrow. I shall sit right here until the day after tomorrow. Right. <laughs> have I to pay the interest on my mortgage tomorrow or have I not? Do you think I am doing this as a joke? Please don't shout, sir. This isn't a stable. I didn't ask you about the stable. I ask you, have I to pay the interest on my mortgage tomorrow or have I not? You don't know how to behave before women. Oh, no, I don't know how to behave before women. No, you don't. You're a rude, ill-bred man. Decent people don't talk to a woman like that. What a business. And how would you like me to talk to me? <laughs> In French, perhaps. <laughs> Je vous prie, I'm so sorry to have to disturb you. And it is all right that you don't pay me the money. <laughs> and as you say, you look very well in mourning. Silly and rude. Silly and rude. I don't know how to behave before war. Madam, I shall tell you, I have seen more women than you've seen spouse. <laughs> Three jewels I have fought on account of the war. Twelve women I have refused. <laughs> Eight women refused me. <laughs> Yes, there was the time when I played the fool, scented myself for new honeyed words, wore beautiful bracelets and made fancy balls. I used to laugh, to sigh at the moon, to talk, to freeze. I used to love gladly, passionately, every blessed way the devil take me. I could chatter like a magpie about emancipation. Half my fortune I wasted on tender feelings. But now you must excuse me. You don't get around me like that anymore. I've had enough. Black eyes, passionate eyes, ruby lips, dimpled cheeks, moon whispering, timid breathing. I wouldn't give a brass fancy for the rest of them. <laughs> All women, present company except, great or small, are vain, trivial, insincere, liars to the marrow of their bones. <laughs> They're unforgiving, unkind, unloving. Confounded. Hang me by that hook of their feet first. But have you ever known a woman who could love anybody other than a lapdog? When a woman is in love, all she can do is snivel and blabber. While the man is in love, he makes sacrifices. When the woman expresses her love through fancy bows and tries to hook him more firmly by the nose. <laughs> you have the misfortune to be a woman. You know yourself what is the nature of the woman. Have you ever known a woman who was faithful and constant? No, you haven't. Only only, only all women and freaks are faithful and constant. <laughs> you'd meet a cat with a horn or a white woodcock sooner than you'd meet a constant woman. <laughs> so, according to you, who is faithful and constant? It is the man. Yes, the man. <laughs> <laughs> men are 
faithful and constant. What an idea. How dare you talk to me like that? Men are faithful and constant. While we are talking about it, I tell you of all the men I knew will know, the best was my late husband. I loved him passionately with all of my being, as only a young and imaginative woman can love. I gave him my youth, my life, my happiness, my fortune. I breathed him in. I gave him all, all that I had. And despite all this, I was true to him. I gave him all, all that I had. But after his death, I found in his desk a whole drawer full of love letters. And while he was alive, oh, it is so hard to remember. He would leave me alone for weeks on end, make love to other women, betray me before my very eyes. He wasted my money and made fun of my feelings. And despite all that, I loved him and was true to him. And now that he is dead, I am still true and constant to his memory. I have set myself forever within these four walls and will wear these weeds to the very end. Ha! 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 I don't know what you take me for, madame. As if I don't know why you wear this black domino or bury yourself behind these four walls. Or should I say I do? It is so romantic, so poetic. For when some junk or some tame poet passes by, he say, there lives the mysterious Tamara, who for the love of her husband buried herself behind these four walls. We know these games. <coughs> How dare you say all this to me? You may have buried yourself behind these four walls, but you did not forget to powder your cheek. <laughs> dare you speak to me like this? Don't shut. I am not your steward. I like to call things by their real names. I'm not a woman. I say things straight out as I tell them. And don't you shout it up. I'm not shouting. It's you. Please leave me alone. Pay me my money and I'll go. I shan't give you any money. Oh, no, you will. I shan't give you a farthing. Just to spite you, you leave me alone. Madam, I have got the pleasure of being your husband or your fiancé. Don't make a scene, please. I don't like it. Sit down. I do. <laughs> I asked you to go. Pay me my money. Oh, I think I am so <coughs> I don't talk to impudent scoundrels. I asked you to go. Aren't you going? No? No. No? No. Very well then. Equality, you'll get it. We'll fight it out. 
<laughs> Which pistols? This very well. Very minute. This very minute. <gasps> My husband had some pistols. I'll bring them here. What pleasure it will give me to put a bullet in your tea cake. <laughs> I take her down like a little chicken. <laughs> I am not a sentimental buyer, a little sentimental body. I don't care about the softer sense in you. Oh, father of pity and a noble woman. Go away from here. You frightened her to death. And now you want to shoot her. <laughs> if she fights, that's equality, emancipation, and all that. <laughs> he of the sex is that equal. I have to shoot her on principle. <laughs> <laughs> but what a woman. <laughs> oh, dear, sir, do, do go away. Hey, I put a bullet through your father. <laughs> How her cheeks shone in her face. Then. <laughs> she accepted my challenge. I want in my life, it is the first time that I have seen that. Oh, dear, dear sir, do go away. <coughs> she is a woman. She is a real woman. The type of woman I could understand. <laughs> Not a self-faced jelly bag. <laughs> a real woman. Fire, knock, gunpowder. I'm even sorry to have to kill her. <laughs> I absolutely like her. Absolutely. Even though her cheeks are dimpled, I like her. I'm nearly ready to forget the dead. I'm not angry any longer. She's She's a wonderful woman. <laughs> a wonderful woman. A wonderful woman. Here are the pistols. But um, before we fight, you must show me how to fire. I've never had a pistol. <laughs> oh, my hands before. Lord, have mercy and save her. I want to go and get the coachman and the gardener. Oh, why has this infliction come upon us? Oh, my God. There, there are many different types of pistols. There's the vinyl pistol, specially produced for fighting Jews. These are a, these are, these are a spit and western revolver. These are a <laughs> Less than 84 percent. Hold, hold the bull like this. The eyes, the eyes. What an inspiring one. Like this? Yes, like this. Hold your hand out straight. Cock the trigger back. Teach your head to Take aim like this. Then you squeeze this little thing with your finger. It's as simple as that. But the good thing is to keep cool. Don't try not to jerk your head. It's uh, inconvenient to shoot in a room. Let's go into the garden. Absolutely, Lord. I warn you now. I'm going to shoot in the air. That's the last straw. Why? Because, because it's my affair. Are you afraid? You're not going to get out of it this easy. I won't have any pleasure until I have put a bullet in that forehead. That forehead that I hate so much. Are you afraid? Yes, I'm afraid. You lie. Why won't you fight? Because, because, because I like you. <laughs> <laughs> he likes me. He dares to say he likes me. That's the way. <coughs> Are you still angry? 
but uh, I'm, 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 I, I don't know how to express myself or where to find the words or, or what to say. Or, is it my fault that I think I like you? Oh, I could smash the whole place. I like you. I, I almost love you. Get away from me. I hate you. Oh, what a wonderful woman. Wonderful woman. I have never met anybody like her. I'm falling into the mouse trap like a mouse. Does it matter? I fire. Oh, fire did fire. You don't know the pleasure it would be to die in front of those beautiful eyes. To be shot by a revolver held in that beautiful velvet hand. Oh, I'm out of my senses. Take now and make up your mind. For when we go out that door, we shall never see each other again. I am a landowner of respectable character. I have an income of 10,000 rubles. I can put a bullet through a kind tossed into the air as it falls to the ground. I have many fine houses. Will you be my wife? Let's go out. Let's fight. Oh, I'm lost. I don't know what's happening. May, what? Let's go out and fight. Oh, I'm lost. I'm in love like a fool, like a puppy. I love you. Ah! I love you as I've never loved before. Twelve women I have refused. Nine women refused me. But I never loved any of them like I love you now. I'm weak, I'm wax, I'm melted. I'm like a fool on my knees, offering you my hand. Oh, shame, shame. I haven't loved a woman in 15 years. I made a vow, but now all of a sudden I'm in love like a fool. I'm like a fish out of water, offering you my hand. Yes or no? <coughs> You don't want me to. Tell him. Stop! Yes? No, go away. <laughs> no, stop! No, I hate you, go away. No. Oh, fingers are all swollen because of this. Good boy. Where are you going? Stop! <laughs> oh, oh, how angry I am, how angry I am. Oh, I'm angry too. I'm angry too. I'm a fool. What did I want to fall in love with you for? I have to pay the interest of my mother. <laughs> <laughs> and we begin mowing the day after. I shall never trust myself for this. Get your hands off me. What do you want of me? I hate you. Let's, let's go and fight. <laughs> Toby is to have no oats at all today. <laughs> <laughs>